Thou, America, thee, ever thee, I sing. I can sing such grandeur and glories about you. What is this America? Land of the pastoral plains, the grass fields of the world. Land of the herd, exulting land of wheat and gold. Land of those sweet-aired, interminable plateaus. Land of the ocean shores. Land of Sierras and peaks. Of this land, America, I say. Among the traditions of America's westward expansion is the memory of an Indian maiden called Sacagawea. Her simple faith in the great explorers Meriwether Lewis and William Clark forms a beautiful and touching American story. Tonight, DuPont on The Cavalcade of America brings you a drama based on her story with Jeanette Nolan of The Cavalcade Players starring in the role of Sacagawea. On a day in the spring of 1803 at a place called Fort Mandan on the Missouri River in the western territory of the Dakotas, there was a great commotion in the village, and all the people gathered on the landing to witness a strange sight, a procession of many boats coming to Fort Mandan. Make way! Make way! The white chiefs are here! Make way! Are they really white chiefs, Chabonneau? I cannot see for all the Sure, people. that's them. Oh, hush, Baptiste. Why you carry that baby on your back the whole time? He is your baby, too, Chabonneau. You better leave him in the lodge with the other women. Oh, see. See how tall and straight they are. They must indeed be great chiefs. They are just white men. I know many like them. Now, who do you think these white men come to see? Me, Chabano. You, Chabano? Why not? Am I not the only white man here at Port Mandar? That is true. You watch. I speak to their captain. Hey there. Hey, you look for me. We're looking for a white man named Charbonneau. I am Charbonneau. Here, Clark, come on. Oh, then you're our man. I'm Captain Clark. This is Captain Lewis. We're going up the Missouri to find a waterway across the northwest of the Pacific Ocean. Ocean? What for do you want to do that? We have a commission from the President of the United States. He must be one big fool. You know how far this is? We have an idea, yes. You know how wild these Indian tribe in these mountains? That's why we came to you. The Indians here tell us that you're the only man who can take us there and who can speak the Shoshone language. Shoshone? Quiet, woman. Sure, Shabano can do that. You've been in that country, haven't you? Well, uh, no, uh, not me, myself. You haven't? Well, can you speak the Shoshone language? Well, uh, not the Shoshone language, no. Well, then what the devil do you mean by telling us you can take us through? Easy. My score here, she's Shoshone, snake woman. That is all her own country. Oh, why did you say so before? What's your name, woman? I am called Sacagawea, bird woman. You look more like a little bird than a woman. I am big enough to have a nest and a little one. Yeah, so I see. What's his name? His name is Baptiste. It is a name for the tribe of my man, Charbonneau. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could guide us across the mountains? I am strong. I can walk all day with my baby on my back. I have done it many times. I... But... But what? First, I must know why you go to the country of my people. Well, we go to make a trail that white men may come and trade. To bring your people the many useful and beautiful things they need. Is it for peace or war and suffering? As white men have brought to other tribes. This I promise you, little bird. We go for peace. Good. My people need guns and powder. Game is scarce in Shoshone country. One thing more. What thing? I must take my baby with me. Well, what do you say, Louis? Well, her man here would be with her. Good. Then I will guide you to the country of my people. And I promise that no harm will come to you upon the way. 
Sacagawea guided them well, showing them where to look for game, and to tell sweet berries from poison, and to boil bitter herbs and drink the tea for a fever. And she would sit silent in the prow of the warrior canoe, watching for signs to guide them. How is it that you never speak, Sacagawea? What are you thinking about? I speak when I can tell you something you do not know, Chief Clark. At the next turning of the river, we must stop. Make camp. Shoot many buffalo. Smoke the meat. But you said these plains went on to the mountains. Look. The grass grows shorter. Not so green. The ribs of the buffalo show through their hides. There has not been rain in this country for a very long time. You're right, Lewis. We better stock up on meat while we can. How long before we come to Shoshone country? Not until you have felt great hunger, Chief Lewis. And that will be good. Then you will understand the need of my people. The green plains came to an end. The white captains and the 28 men in the strange procession of boats had not yet felt the pinch of hunger. For the little bird woman, Sacagawea, had foreseen their need. Chief Clark? Oh, Oh, come in, little bird, come in. Well, what have you brought me this evening? I catch a small rabbit in a snare, Chief Clark. This I cook for you, with spice leaves, as the Shoshone cook it. You shouldn't do things like this, Sacagawea. Do I not feed my own man well? I bring you this... Because you work late. Many times forget to eat. You notice everything, don't you, bird woman? You make many marks in these books every night. What do they mean, Chief Clark? Why, they tell me how far we've come. How far we have yet to go. But I can tell you this, Chief Clark. I know. But I make this record so that other white men can make the trip without your help. They can tell by the marks? The marks and the map. Map? Yes. Here. You see, this is the river. And we're just about here. Yesterday, we made camp at this bend back here. Now, that means we made about 24 miles today. It it does not look like the river, Chief Clark. No, but it represents the river, Sacagawea. Just as your people make a mark. So, and it means bird, but it doesn't look like a bird. But our mark does not tell the color of the bird or how far it has flown. Will you teach me, Chief Clark, so that I can teach my people? Well, I'll try, Sacagawea. Good. Now I must tell you something which I know, Chief Clark. And what's that? I have seen lake fish in the rapids today. We come to big blue water. We must go slow through the blue water, catch fish and game while we can. The land beyond is worst of all. And, Chief Clark. Yes, Sacagawea? If anything should happen to me, do not leave my little Baptiste with Charbonneau. Take him on to my people. I promise, Sacagawea. And if anything should happen to me... The books with the marks in them. Yes, I will guard them with my life. You are listening to the DuPont Cavalcade of America, presenting the story of Sacagawea, starring Jeanette Nolan of the Cavalcade Players. The Cavalcade of America is brought to you each Monday by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. They came to the Blue Lake water, the strange procession of boats plying upstream and westward following the centuries-old white man's dream of a northwest passage to the western sea. 
A band of white men and a tiny Indian woman, a papoose strapped to her strong, straight back. Back at your ear. Why you told the captain to make us work like slaves to store up the food? There is fish. There is plenty of game in these parts. We come to bad land beyond this blue water. We must save all the food we can. Even so, there will not be enough. And why we don't turn back? Chagano, why do you have so much fear in your heart? Is it because you cannot put marks on paper like Chief Clark? Oh, he right, does he? Maybe you want him to teach you to write. He teaches me so I can teach my people. So they will know of men who have gone before. Even dead men. That is the greatest knowledge of all, Shabano. I keep my knowledge to myself and stay alive. Can you not understand? Those books are more important to Chief Clark than hunger. Than even his life. So? So the books are the thing. I bet if he lose all, she might turn back, huh? Maybe not. With the instruments, he can go on. Make maps of Shoshone country. The instrument? The heavy pack? The thing he used to look at his son? Shabano, what are you thinking? Why, nothing, Sakajiwa, nothing at all. I, I'm glad you told me about those things. I take good care of them. I take very good care of them. But Sacagawea was troubled, and she watched the things which were so precious to the white captains, and Charbonneau knew she would guard them with her life. As they sailed into a narrow channel at the end of the blue water... Keep her in close, Chabonneau. There may be a place to camp near here. Watch those packs. We're shipping a little water. Chief Clark, look. White water ahead. Squall coming up. Enter into the wind, Chabonneau. Enter into it. Whether we should put the shore, Captain. No. Steady. Put her into the wind. There she comes. No, no, into the wind. Don't go with it. Please keep over. What the hell coming in? We all drown. Chabano, grab that pack. We're going overboard. We all be drowned. Chabano, you're here. Catch the pack. Chabano, you're here behind us. Steady. Chabano. Steady. Steady. I slack her off a little. I think we're all right now. Head her in for shore. You fool woman. You almost drown us all for those packs. All right, beat her. You all right, Bart? All right, now. That was pretty close. Better get the things out and dry them. Give me a hand there, Chabonneau. Plenty lucky we saved the boat, Captain Clark. Saved the boat? Do you realize what we'd have lost if it hadn't been for your wife? Say, could you, we? I don't know how we can ever thank you. Please. Please don't, Chief Clark. Chabonneau? If I thought you'd tried to push those packs in the water, I... No. No, Chief Clark. I don't think he meant to do that. Well, maybe not. But after this, I think you better steer one of the other boats, Charbonneau. You see how it is. Sure. I see how it is, Captain Clark. <laughs> Branches into three forks. I frankly confess I don't know which to take. Any of you want to turn back may do so with honor. But Chief Clark, if they turn back, who will guide them to the hunting ground? The Manatari? The Dakota? Never. They will kill and kill, for it is a time of great hunger in the plains. Captain Clark says we don't even know which fork of the river to take. I know which fork to take. That will lead you to my people. But you said yesterday you didn't remember this country, Sacagawea. But I remember the war paint of my tribe. 
It is yellow. The water of this fork of the river is yellow. It must lead to Shoshone country. Follow it and you will see. How many days have we been in your Shoshone country now, Sacagawea? Seven days. Almost eight. And where are your people? I cannot see. Maybe they already know that we are here. We can only go on. Does it always rain like this? Yes, at this time of year. The hunger also? There is little game here. My people are poor. He's hungry, too. No. It is my people. They have seen us. Why don't they come out to meet us? Because they are afraid. They think maybe it is better to kill us. Wait. Listen. What is it? What are you doing? I make a bird call. I remember when I am a baby. Maybe they hear. Maybe they remember. Wait here. I go to meet them. No, Sacagawea. They may kill you. If I do not go, they may kill us all. Wait for me, Chief Clark. Men, gather around close. Make sure your powder's dry. Wait for my order to fire. There comes one of them now, heading this way. Hold your fire a second. You may be alone. No, there are others. Look. All right. Men, get your muskets ready. Aim. Don't fire. It's like a Julia. The flock. Watch it. All is well. This is Black Bow, great chief of Shoshone. My brother. Welcome, white chief, to the country of our people. <laughs> And Sacagawea's people gave them horses for the trip over the snowy passes of the western mountains. And at last they came to the river called the Snake, after her tribe of the Shoshone Nation. And they sailed down the broad river among leaping salmon, Sacagawea, the little bird woman, and the tall white chief. White chief, listen. you hear that sound? Yes, little bird. Around this bend, I think we'll see what we've come to see. That is good. Yes, there it is, Sacagawea. Stop paddling, men. It is like thunder. What is it? It's the noise of the great salt water, the Western Ocean. What is it, Sacagawea? This is the end of our journey. Aren't you happy now? Happy? For me, there is nothing now. For it means I must leave you and go with my people. This is goodbye, Chief Clark. But before I go, I wish you to promise you will take my little son, my little Baptiste, back with you. I want him to grow up to be white man. I want my son to be like you. But what about Charbonneau and you? He does not love the child. I belong with my people, the Shoshone. Will you do this for me, Chief Clark? Yes. Yes, Sacagawea, I will. Seasons pass into months, and the months into years. And in the year 1811, in the busy new river town of St. Louis, lives Captain William Clark. 
One night as he sits at his desk in the study of his ample mansion, a gust of wind disarranges his papers, and he looks up with a start. Sacagawea, how did you get in here? I have come to kill you. Sacagawea? I am Shoshone, snake woman. But what is it? What's happened? I believed in you and trusted you. You told me no harm would come to my people. Because you said it, I gave you my faith. But you knew the white men would follow you to our land. That they would drive my people away. Cheat us and rob us. I led you to my land and my people. I promised them new freedom, new life. And it was I who brought them slavery and death. Now I want death for myself and for my people, your life. Like a weird, listen. Liar! Liar! Daddy! Daddy, come and show me your sword. Oh. Is... Is this... Yes. Batiste, this lady is... I... I am Shoshone, child. Shoshone? Yes, I know. Daddy told me. Didn't you, Daddy? Batiste, how many times have I told you not to go into your father's study when he was working? But, Mother, I... Sacagawea, this is my wife. You... You are very beautiful. Sacagawea. I've always wanted to meet you. You must be so happy. I... Come, Bertie. It's your bedtime. Kiss your daddy goodnight. Good night, Daddy. Good night, son. You'll excuse it. He's very tired. Can I kiss the Shoshone lady goodnight, too? I... I... Yes, son. I think you'd better. Good night, Shoshone lady. Good night. Baptiste. Come along, Baptiste. Sacagawea. She will make fine mother for my little Baptiste. You believe that, Sacagawea? Can you believe anything about me? Yes, Chief Clark. I believe. Sacagawea, I promise you these wrongs you speak of will be made right. They must be. If it takes my life, I'll bring help to your people. Just be kind to us. That's all we want. Goodbye, White Chief. I must go now. I must return to my people. Sacagawea, are you going alone? I am going alone. And so it was that William Clark came to hear of the sorrow that had befallen Sacagawea's people. And the great white father in Washington heard, too, and be grieved. And he formed a council of white chiefs to do something to make amends. And as head of that council, he appointed William Clark. In our story of chemistry at work in our world, DuPont brings you news of the war against food waste in which chemistry is proving itself a smart soldier. The sparkling transparency of cellophane cellulose film, for example, lets you see the food you're buying and keeps it clean. But cellophane has another job, too, conserving food and helping to prevent food waste. Take baked goods. Breads, rolls, cakes, and biscuits all come to you in this moisture-proof wrapping. Cellophane safeguards their freshness from the oven to your table. And products of the farm benefit, too. 
Cellophane helps to keep tomatoes, celery, spinach, berries, and other fresh fruits and vegetables from spoiling. Quick frozen foods, the most modern form of food conservation, are also protected by cellophane, which keeps them from drying out. Also, a handy roll of moisture-proof cellophane has been developed for the housewife's use in conserving leftover foods and eliminating waste. Chemistry also reduces waste in agriculture. DuPont chemists protect the farmer's seed against fungus attack, assuring him greater yields and better quality, just as chemical fertilizers and insecticides assure him greater yields and higher quality of his harvest. Special chemicals have been compounded to cut down waste even in fruit orchards. Apples, for example, often ripen and fall from the trees before the grower can pick them. And a bruised apple is not only less appetizing, but it also spoils. Parmone hormone chemicals sprayed in the trees toughens the stems of ripening apples and makes them hang on longer. Trees that normally lose as much as half of their fruit when treated with parmone drop comparatively few apples instead of the dozens and even hundreds that fall from unsprayed trees. Again, chemistry cuts down waste. Diseases of farm animals cost the United States $200 million a year, and many of the diseases of cattle, hogs, and sheep are due to worms. Worms aren't a very pleasant subject, but they're something the stock raiser must deal with because they mean scrawny animals, decreased weight, and stock deterioration. Recently, the United States Department of Agriculture, aided by DuPont chemists, developed a worm medicine for cattle, sheep, hogs, and poultry called phenothiazine. Until recently, phenothiazine amounted to little more than a laboratory curiosity. It was originally classed as an insecticide. But tests have established beyond doubt that stock and poultry breeders now have a highly effective weapon against waste. There's little doubt that in the near future, we Americans are going to have to tighten our belts and wrestle with this problem of conserving food as never before. With food conservation, as with so many other problems, we can rely upon the aid of the chemist who brings us in the words of the DuPont Pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. Next week, the Cavalcade of America presents Carl Swenson in the stirring and dramatic story of Leif Erikson. Long before Columbus anchored his three vessels off the shores of the New World, this heroic Viking is believed to have founded the first colony on the eastern coastline of this continent. In our story of chemistry at work in our world, we will tell you how chemistry is aiding in the solution of some of our national defense problems by helping to eliminate bottlenecks and speed production. We hope you'll join us next week at this same time when DuPont again presents the Cavalcade of America. In support of Jeanette Nolan as Sacagawea on tonight's program were the Cavalcade players with John McIntyre as William Clark, Ted Jewett as Meriwether Lewis, and Edwin Jerome as Charbonneau. Our drama was written by Robert Tallman and Robert L. Richards. The orchestra and the original musical score were under the direction of Don Vuri. On the Cavalcade of America, your announcer is Clayton Collier, sending best wishes from DuPont. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.